All right, we fixed it. All right, we're doing a live stream. Um, it's it's time to catch up. So, I mean, I've wanted to do this since we got the bus because there was a lot of questions, comments, concerns in regards to the bus, and I was like, I'm gonna do a live stream. The live streams are my way to to catch up. Jibber jabber, literally jibber jabber. I like jibber jabbering. I do a lot of it in the videos, but I cut a lot of it out, and I can't fit every thing I want to say and explain in a video. We've got Josue with us again this time. Hello. He's the moderator. I should make you a moderator. Figure that out. Um, oh, wait, no, you you would have to phone. comment. Don't touch the phone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, he's going to check for like comments, questions, super chat, so that way I don't have to like keep switching back and forth. Because I know it's kind of got to be difficult to watch from like on a tangent and then the chat and then it's going back and forth. So, uh, yeah. Uh, this is like my version of a podcast and I've noticed, uh, the street racing channel and other couple people doing podcasts, not with guests. Like maybe they'll, they'll do them with guests too, but they also do solo ones. Like if me, Raldo and Josue were to sit and talk and catch up and, uh, let me know if you'd be interested in that. It's kind of, I like talking and I have so many topics. I mean, me and Josue will sit here for an hour when he shows up, uh, and just, talk about plans and what do we want to do what are we going to work on you know are we do we do this with the miata should we go do this kind of there's this event coming up you know so i think that would be pretty cool to do so uh jibber jabber podcast would be the name of it it would have to be i mean that would be perfect so i've got notes i got a lot of notes so before we get into questions we got we got a lot to talk about i got a lot to catch you guys up on there's a lot of uh, a lot of details so the bus, let's start with the bus. Uh, so <laughs> first off, people think, I, I realize not everything, you, you don't see everything in a YouTube video, right? Like all of a sudden we're buying a bus. So maybe it looks like it was a spur of the moment thing, but we spent, what, three weeks or more like laboring over that yeah. decision. And we talked about it, we watched, countless videos of people driving old buses like we did i wish i would have done maybe more research but i wouldn't have really affected my decision to buy it um but we, we thought about it a lot and we talked about the pros and cons and what is it really going to be like to stay in this bus at the track what's going to be like to unload and load it what's how are we going to be able to fit all our stuff in it like we really thought this through and we bought the bus and i'm still happy with the bus um Okay, I said I wasn't going to interrupt for the chats, but this is relevant. Uh, Blake Dragon said, take the bus to bus Grease Monkey. So that's a YouTube channel on buses, old RVs and stuff, mainly bus conversions. And it's uh, it's a really neat channel. And the guy's super cool, very knowledgeable. I did reach out to him and we were trying to plan something, but I basically was going to need to bring it up there, which is 10, I think a 10 hour drive, 10, 12 hour drive, not counting stops. Um, and then have him look it over, kind of figure out what's wrong. And then he didn't have any openings until next year. So we were like, all right, we'll kind of tackle it ourselves. But then we didn't have time because we needed to use it to go to events. And that's why we bought the trailer. We now have the trailer. We can go to events. We have a tow rig set up and we can really work on the bus. The bus is a like a passion project for me. I really like the bus. Like I think it, I've wanted something like that forever. That is like a bucket list setup. And, you know, one of the funny, Josue is probably the most into the bus, I would say, out of all of us. I mean, it's, it's, it's neat. Right? It's definitely neat. And yeah. it's cool. Like, using it's awesome. It was awesome. too good to pass up. Like, right? It was just too neat. We literally, it started out as like, wouldn't it be cool if I could, like, buy this bus? Like, what if I could convince him to take my trailer as partial trade? And what if we can get him to this number? And what if, and it all happened. And we bought the bus. Uh, so, something that was funny is going into getting the bus like in my head the average viewer would be like that's sick it's a great idea you know not really like more so focus on the cool factor than the dealing with it on a regular basis and then i thought all of my friends who like towed regularly and had tow rig setups and stuff i thought they were going to criticize me and be like dude why would you get that you should know better than this you're going to hate it it's going to be terrible but it was the opposite. Like every other comment was like, why did you get that? That's when you thought it was bad when your Ford broke down, just wait, you know, all this kind of stuff. And then all my friends who've had tow rigs, I mean, FD drivers like Chelsea, Matt Field, like all these people that have experience towing with different setups were all like, that's the coolest thing ever. Great idea. That thing's sick. Chelsea came by, he had to pick up some stuff and he looked at it. He thought it was sick. 
Um, so it was kind of funny. It's like, it was kind of the opposite of what I thought. So here's the thing with the bus. The bus broke on us. I get it. It's annoying. I mean, we've had a bad string of luck this year, you know, like what is it? Three events that we could have probably done well at. And we're kind of like the perfect events to take the vet to. We didn't make it to LS Fest, Riverside. That's cause I got sick. And then LS Fest again. So it's disappointing. Like, don't get me wrong. Uh, I really don't want to miss events, but at the same time, like it happens. And it's, you know, people, I've gotten some criticism lately buying different trailers and the truck and the tr different, you know, getting the mega cab and getting rid of the Fummins and getting rid of the Ford and getting the bus. Um, but it's one of those things where like, you don't really know what's gonna work till you try it. And there really is no surefire way to just foolproof travel, right? Like no risk that you're gonna have any problems. I mean, we learned that firsthand. We tried. We tried, <laughs> we tried. I bought a newer truck. I, I financed that truck. I, I did put a good down payment down because I wanted to make sure I would never be upside down in it. If I needed to sell it, I wouldn't like still owe money after it was gone. But I financed it. It's the only vehicle in my life that I've ever financed. I've always been against it. When that meant driving a thousand dollar beater as a daily, you know, like an Infiniti G20 that I literally bought for a thousand dollars, that's what I did, right? I just dealt with it. It had never was never even considered financing. But when it came to the truck, I'm like, man, I want to make it to events. I don't want to worry about this. I don't want to stress on every road trip. Are we going to break down? We got to check the truck over. So I bought it and then it broke down anyway. So a lot of people think I got rid of that truck out of kind of like rage. Like I was just like, oh, I'm so mad at this truck that it broke. And I was even mad that it broke. I wasn't even mad that it broke. I was just, I was like, this is ironic <laughs> that the, the least likely tow rig I've ever had to break is the one that broke. Like that is ironic, but it happens. Things break. It was everything else after that, that was really the problem. It was having to pay extra to get my trailer towed separately, then being told it couldn't be in the lot. So it's like, I'm getting yelled at by the tow truck driver to figure it out. We got to take it right now or leave it, or you don't have anywhere to put it. You know, and just being in that situation where like my whole livelihood is in this trailer. I'm being told I can't keep it here. I'm being told they need to leave right now. So it's either let them take it 30 minutes away to some random tow yard or find somewhere to put it right now, like literally immediately. And then, oh, we're not even gonna look at the truck for days. And then the fact that it most likely wouldn't have been warrantied if it weren't for the video doing really well and getting a bunch of views. All of that, I was like, this is just not worth it. You know, the whole point of owning this truck was like, I shouldn't have to work on it, you know? Take it to the dealer for services, blah, blah, blah. And that all, that all did not turn out to be true. And, and I'm still making a payment on the truck. So I'm like, or I can just sell this thing, get some money out of it, and then go buy a truck outright. At least if it breaks, I can decide where, what I want to do. Um, same with going to the bumper pull trailer. You know, the biggest struggle was that we had a gooseneck. And there was an Enterprise. Like, we had the one wheels, we had the scooter. We could have rode the one wheels to Enterprise, rented a truck, rode, drove it back, hooked up to the trailer, and been on our merry way. Uh, they had trucks. They just didn't have a single truck with a gooseneck hitch in it. And we could not find one until Chris. Shout out to Chris again. They saved the, the week, year, Life month. Saver. Lifesaver. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I think if your pure goal was reliability, like the way to do that would be to buy a new truck every two years, go to like 50,000 miles, trade it in on a new truck. Now the problem is doing that, you're gonna lose about $20,000 every time, which means your cost per mile um, is gonna be like 50 cents a mile. So every mile you do costs you 50 cents. And that's just not something I can really live with. As like a do it myself person, uh, I just, I can't bring myself to finance a truck and just like get further and further upside down every two years. I just can't do it. Um, so that's just not for me, you know? I think if, if I had to say just what is the one way we're for sure gonna get there, that's probably it. Buy a new truck, trade in every two years. Uh, but financially, that's a big hit. You're gonna just lose a, a ton of money every time. And it could still break. You could still get a lemon, you know? <laughs> and it could still break. And we've learned what it's like when it breaks. It's not good. It's not a great experience. So, the bus uh, being, it's a bus, right? I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. You know, like the kitchen lights quit working. I gotta figure out how that circuit even works. Where's the, how's that wired? But it, 
it's all simple stuff. It's all mechanical. It's all basic. It's not like the newest stuff where there's just all these computers and modules and yeah. things that you've got to do. We need some time. Yeah. Some time. We need some time to, to really dial it in. And that was our plan. I mean, we talked about it before we got it. We're like, all right, we're going to get this thing home. We're going to go through it front to back. And that just kind of went out the window because time. You just never have as much time as you think you do. Yeah. <laughs> we thought we were going to have more time. Now we have time. Now we have time. We have the trailer so we can work on the bus. Do I have any more notes on the bus? Another thing I guess that people might not think about when it comes to the bus, you know, one with the bus and me buying the new trailer, I got a lot of criticism on that one. I'm um, changing my name legally to ta- to Trailer Ray, by the way. <laughs> I have to. We should make a trailer trailer ray shirt. We're, we're embracing it. You, know, you gotta embrace it. I, I, I mean, I like trailers, and that's the funny thing is, I, I think people really don't realize that. Like when we we went to FL two K to go hang out. I've never been to a big drag race. I didn't film it or anything, but we just went, hung out, um, and literally we were walking through the pits, and all I was looking at with the trailers was trailers, people's trailer setup, people's buses, people's. RV tow rigs, like, I, I just like tow rigs, you know, like, it's not just a means to an end for me, you know, it's like the cars are the flashy thing, and I see these people who have, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars in cars, and then, like, some run-down $10,000 rinky-dink enclosed trailer, but that's just not where my priorities are, my priorities are dial in the foundation, the tow rig setups, you know, we've got the bus, uh, and we've got the truck and trailer now, and now whatever we decide to do, Whatever, if it's no prep, if it's drifting, if it's FD, if it's all these other things, we have the foundation there. We've got a nice trailer. We're going to work on the truck. We're going to probably do injectors just to be safe, built transmission, blah, blah, blah. We have the foundation. And to me, that's important. Plus, I just like it. Like, I get as excited about buying that trailer and using it as I would buying a car and using it. And same with the bus. The other thing about the bus is the bus is unique. So it's a cool series that's different you know and i was watching a uh, cooper's podcast uh, shout out i think it's what is it called bugetti studios maybe uh he has a lot of great guests on he had cletus garrett on and th- they were talking about like how different the automotive youtube space is and how much harder it is now and how stuff that they would make videos of three four five years ago they would never consider making a video of today and that is Uh, 100% the case. You know, I used to make a video just going to a random car meet. Like, I'd just film going to the car meet. I would never consider doing that today. You know, now it's like my goal is to make every video, like, nice and fulfilling and has a lot of action, action as in content progress happening in the video. And it's like, it's a hard thing to do and it kind of cuts out a lot of what you can film. Not to mention, like, Every type of car has already been built. There's already a YouTuber of some sort that is literally building whatever kind of car, a rally car, a trophy truck, a tube chassis, a electric, as we said earlier, we were talking about this, electric, electric to gas conversion, gas to electric conversion. Just everything. Literally everything has already been done. So it's, it is kind of tough to do something unique in that way. Whereas the bus is something unique that I'm really passionate about because I can't bring myself to build stuff just for the sake of YouTube and content. Like I've, I've tried, I thought about it. Like what would I build if I just didn't care about it? I just wanted to build something that was going to get views. I'm like, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. It's not me. The bus I'm passionate about. I enjoy it. I think it's sick. And I think it's going to be real sick when we're done with it. Is it going to be hard work? Yes, absolutely. The suspension stuff, especially. It does not look fun to do. And we need to get in there and do things. We need to place that power steering line. Like, there's a lot of work to be done. But at the end of the day, we're going to have this one-of-one car hauler bus, you know? So the idea behind buying the trailer is we have both options. One, we can tow the trailer behind the bus, which obviously has its own benefits. That was one of the big selling points of the bus was that we could take two cars. We had a setup that was efficient to take one car, but then also could take two cars. Whereas like if I got a two car enclosed trailer, using that for one car would be silly. You'd have all this wasted space. So it was a cool, it was a cool setup in that way. Um, So there's that. Or we can tow the trailer behind the truck. And I think based on my limited use of the bus so far, my guess would be we use the bus for things like Hyperfest, Grid Life, uh, those, you know, maybe three-day OSW events, big, big bash events that are just 
fun. There's a lot of people camping. It's kind of set up for you to camp. Use it for that stuff. You know, the stuff where we can leave a day early. If we're a day late, it's not the end of the world. More laid back weekends where we're just enjoying the ride. And then use the truck and trailer for the serious comp stuff. Because the comps take a lot out of you. You know, mentally, physically, you know, you got to be there early. You're there all day. You got to drive. You got to focus. You got to be on the ball. The car's got to be dialed. So to add in, like, tinkering with the bus on top of that is not great. Uh, whereas if we just take the trailer, stay at a hotel, all our bases are covered. So, <sighs> did I miss anything on the bus stuff? I think that's it for this whole page. That was pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Uh, you see any good comments that should be... I mean, it's just uh, it's hard to keep up. I'm you gotta, trying. You got to write the, the, the super chats down. We missed one. Did you miss a super chat? There's one here. So many people get you down in life. This is your life. Live it to the fullest. Oh, I was planning on swapping a 94 me out. That's awesome. Uh, someone said wrap the bus. That is the plan. We are going to wrap the bus. Hopefully ourselves. I had a company reach out that uh, makes vinyl wrap. And they're like, can we sponsor you vinyl wrap? I'm like, who wants to see that? <laughs> <laughs> would you want to sponsor it for a whole bus? <laughs> and uh, we're going to we, us wrap it ourselves. Let's try to wrap it ourselves. I guess try. Try is the good point. <laughs> try is the operating word there. All right. So the next thing I wanted to talk about, uh, project plan is probably more important. Drift comps, real quick. Uh, if you saw the OSW video, uh, we did another pro-am and we had another, uh, just not the best time, but I mean, it's part of it. Uh, we're just kind of at a weird place with comps right now you know like we built the car based on clutch kickers existing and then clutch kickers disappeared and then we're kind of left in this weird kind of middle ground where like i'm not necessarily ready for fd the financial commitment the time commitment the sponsorship like there's a lot that's a that's a whole thing in and of itself and it would require all my focus, you know, I, I wouldn't really be able to dabble in doing all this other stuff like I like doing. I mean, like I want to do like with no prep. So it's, it's tough. It's still on the table. So I'm not saying it's off the table, but doing FD is a, it's a big, big commitment. And it's even if I, that's if I could get my license, the, the problem is between pro spec and pro, the vet doesn't really fit. I mean, it fits in pro, but I don't. The, doesn't fit in prospect, but I do. You know, that's kind of where, where we're at. Uh, we could change it to make it work for prospect, but then we can't run Nittos. I love Nitto. They have been the best sponsor I've ever had in my entire life. Ron and Harry are awesome. I doubt they'll watch this, but if they do, I love you guys. <laughs> you guys are really, they're, they're the best. They're awesome. They've always got my back. They're always down for whatever cool stuff I'm trying to do. Um, so I, to go from being able to run Nittos to have to like run some other tire to do pro spec is not so appealing but then when you go to the the payout comps like the shootout comps the grassroots comps whatever you want to call them there's just they're kind of far and few between and they're very hit or miss you know you might get a full driver field of 60 70 guys you might show up and there's 25 guys for a top 64 you know and then the event might get pushed. The event might get canceled. The event might never come back next year. You don't really know what's happening till it's happening. So it's, it's hard to count on those as like, this is my plan for the year for this car that I built. We're, we want to compete next year. I don't know where we're going to compete. Um, I, okay, I kind of know where. There's another part of that with the Miata, but we'll get into that in a second. Uh, the OSW comp specifically, that was a tough one if you watched the video. The car was so good. The car was dialed. It was so easy to drive. It was fast, so fast. It was ours to win, or it was ours to, it was ours to lose, and I lost it. Uh, I bobbled across the middle. It was called a straight. I, I feel like it wasn't a straight, but I can definitely see feeling like it was a straight. You know what I mean? I think it, could, I think it, it was on the border, and it just depends on your perception of straight. I think the majority of people would probably call it a straight. You know, it's just, I have a different opinion. But regardless, I bobbled. I left it in the judge's hands. I lost. I screwed up. Uh, that was disappointing because the car was there. Uh, but one thing I realized after, and this is something that happens, seems to happen at every drift comp, is people come up to us and they're like, the car's so fast. The car's so hooked up. Like, oh, the car looks too hooked up. The car looks too fast. The car's so fast. The car's so hooked up. 
And every time we're taking grip out of it, every single time, pull grip out, pull grip out, and make it as slow as the cars in battling. And then that event, I was like, what's the point? Why do I have this car that has the potential for all the grip and all the power? And then I just take it all out of it because I let people get in my head that it's too fast and it's too hooked up. So we decided this event to just leave it, which works track to just leave it on. Bank track, it is the hardest track to be on and be faster than somebody. But we did it and it was for the most part fine. And something I realized afterwards, kind of reflecting back on it, you know, uh, something I think that made my car seem even faster is that the way it was set up, I didn't have to left foot brake on the bank, hardly at all to stay on the wall. Normally you've got a left foot brake and that the more left foot brake you do, the more it drives you up onto the wall. So I didn't have to use much. So the car was pretty much unleashed. You know, I wasn't holding it back with the brakes. Whereas a lot of the other people, they had their cars really hooked up. And then because of that, the cars want to drive down the bank. And because they want to drive down the bank, they got to stay, stand on the left foot brake to keep the car up there, which makes them even slower. And I noticed that with a bunch of people I followed. And even in the battle with Steven, you know, I was struggling to keep it slowed down behind him on the bank. You know, and he was using a lot of left foot brake. Uh, and then as soon as we got on the infield, I almost couldn't reel him in. You know, like I had a hard time when I was trying to close the door, but it's because I think everyone I followed was using a lot of left foot brake on the bank, which made it extra slow. And then once we got off the bank, they were fast. So it's like, even if I had loosened my car up, maybe I would have been with them better on the bank, but then I would have got gapped in the middle. So Calm drifting is hard, man. There really is no comparable motorsport. Like I've tried to think of like an analogy to like another motorsport and there really isn't one, you know, cause it's like drag racing where you're battling one V one on somebody, but it's like, you can't just be faster, right? Like in drag racing, if you have the faster car and you can go faster, that's great. But it's like, you can only go faster to as fast as they're going when you have to chase them. So it's this fine line of like, making your car fast but then not making it too fast because if it's too fast you're not going to be able to stay behind them and that's one thing that has been difficult in like especially the pro-am but pretty much any of these comps is you have such a big variety of cars and i think that's something that would be really nice about fd is that it's a much more compact spread you know from the slowest car to the fastest car it's not a huge jump especially in pro spec you know they're all built cars dog box quick change like all the things whereas in pro-am i gotta set my car up to be able to follow lewis lawns and his corvette that's basically my corvette with nitrous instead of a turbo or potentially follow a stock 350z you know so that's a that's a huge range of, of cars that you've got to be able to adapt to and that makes it really challenging and you can't really practice and practice the setup and whatever you can't you can't set your car up to be super fast or super slow because you got to kind of do both but you can't really practice doing both so it's it's tricky uh it's just um another thing that's interesting with drift comps uh when we were at riverside the 50k in jersey i noticed this like you i kind of pick things up watching some of the pro guys and how they approach things and you know one of the tough things is you don't get a ton of practice laps and the same thing, you have a lot of variety in cars and drivers. So there might be some slow guy, and you might want to follow a slow, slower car just to see how where you're at. But you really want to follow the good fast guys because like if you're going to win the thing, you got to beat those guys. So I I would I would end up where I wasn't I I wasn't in line at the right times to follow those people. You know, it was I never got to line up with someone fast and see where we were at because we had people telling us, oh, the car's so fast, the car's so fast, but we never followed any, we didn't get to follow anybody fast. And I noticed what the, the pro drivers do. So, for example, I pulled up and I was behind Rome in the chase line and, and then Alex Yeager pulled up next to me, which he's a pro spec driver, really good driver. And I was like, sick, I get to follow Yeager. Like I finally get to follow like a fast, super competitive car in practice. Then Rome gets out of line and he pulls up behind me, which so then I scoot one car forward to follow someone else. And then he gets to follow Jaeger. So there's these games that you have to play. And then uh, I noticed Rudy Hansen was doing this a lot where he would park, he would stop uh, at like the entry 
to the, there was like a, a couple lanes and then kind of spread out. And he would stop right there and wait till he was like almost the next pair to go out to pull up. Right. And I'm like, why is he doing this? And maybe it was just the way he does things, but it makes when there's one line where everyone's bumper to bumper and one line where there's a four or five car gap, it's kind of hard to know who you're going to tandem with. You know, like you might be next to somebody and think it's going to be this guy and then it's somebody else entirely. You know, like I've had this situation where I'm like, I tried to count them out and I aired down the tires and then I was going against someone slow. And I'm like, I thought I was going against this fast guy. So there's a lot of that stuff with comps. And I mean, that's only the surface that I know of it. Um, so what are we doing for drift comps in the future? I really don't know. I haven't given it a whole ton of thought for next year. It's tough. There was a point where I wanted to see if we could do FD and I thought about buying another car. There was a guy, Kurt, selling his car. Really, really nice car for the money. Dog box, quick change, E36, NALS with nitrous. And I thought about buying that car, running Pro Spec. And then that way, if we could do well in Pro Spec, then we have the vet for Pro 1 and kind of save it. Uh, but uh, it sold anyway. And I want to venture. That's the thing. I want to do no prep, which we're going to get into that. Um, but yeah, so it's tough because we're at this weird point now where we're kind of we're kind of considered as like puppy kickers if we show up to anything other than like FD or the big payout events. Even there, probably, you know, like we go to pro am because it's local and we just want to get some seat time in a comp environment. And it's like we're the bad guys for showing up with this crazy car, but it's like. I'm not even that good in that car. I'm probably more competitive in my Miata still because I haven't driven that car enough. But then I can't drive it because if I try to drive it, then I'm the bad guy, you know? And it's it's just like such this difficult situation where it's like, I don't know what to do, you know? I don't know what we can do. Cause it's like, if we take the car and try to get seat time and get better in it, we're the bad guys. If we don't run it, then we're never going to get better in it. And we're still going to be looked at as bad guys when we do take it out, you know? So it's like, do we just deal with being the bad guys? What do we do? Yeah, it's tough. So uh, I think for next year, I'd like to try to do more of the LZ stuff, at least the stuff that I could trailer to. Um, I think I like that series. I like what he's doing with it. I think it's a really nice field of drivers. You've got a ton of fans there watching, which is cool. Um, it's a good, it's a good stacked field, uh, but with limited by tire. And that's the only thing that's the struggle is the tire limitation, you know, running the type of tire we'd have to run on the vet to run a nitto and comply with like the tread wear and size rules. The vet's not going to be very competitive, which in and of itself would be fine. But the downside is it wouldn't be very competitive compared to these other cars, but the average person would think that we have like, we were puppy kicking. Again, we have this crazy car. So my idea is to upgrade the Miata and take it. Granted, I would have to run a 205 versus people on 265s, but I think it would be competitive still on a 205. I think it would be competitive enough. Um, so I don't know, we're considering rebuilding the Miata. Uh, for anyone still on the bus topic, we're not selling the bus. We're rebuilding the bus. I just keep seeing the word bus pop up with different opinions. Uh, we're keeping the bus unless some unforeseen circumstance happens. Uh, but we, we're going to be upgrading the bus. Same. Same. You, heard, you heard the man. <laughs> was, I'm just kidding. Right? I was waiting let me get rid of it, even if I wanted to. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I have my, my doubts, my buyer's remorse with the bus. Um... But the more we've used it, the more I love it. And it's a cool project. And it's just going to take some elbow grease. But that's like, that's what we do, you know? It's it's either elbow grease on that or elbow grease on something else. We, we're going to be putting in elbow grease somewhere. Might as well put it on this cool bus that we get to use. Um, so, uh, back to the drift comp topic, the Miata. Uh, so, the Miata upgrades rabbit hole uh i would like to put a dog box in it i need to talk to g-force and see how feasible it would be to get a dog box for it i think that would really take that car to the next level that along with a little bit of a gearing change but then also a little bit 
spicy or higher RPM motor so we don't ever need to run nitrous again because we kind of hurt the motor that's in it with nitrous. That's my fault. I didn't data log or do what I should have done when I put nitrous on it. Good morning. But yeah, definitely gotten a lot better with the vet. I actually look at data logs and make sure things are healthy. The Miata, I just put Matt Apple sent me what should be the amount of added fuel that needs to be in there for the nitrous. I put it in there, never looked at it again. <laughs> So anyway, the Miata motor, before it could go to comps or whatever, would need the engine pulled out and, and refreshed at a minimum. It's got low-ish compression on two cylinders, like 120 on cylinder, I want to say one and eight or something like that, or two and seven, something like that. So I was thinking about building a similar engine for the Monte Carlo here. It's right over here. Boom, the Monte Carlo. So... Uh, if I'm going to build basically the same deal, 6.2, big cam, short travel lifters, all that stuff, could use the engine out of the Miata, put rods and pistons in it for some nitrous for the Monte Carlo, and then put together a high RPM engine for the Miata, which I think would just make it more fun and exciting too. So um, someone said bigger tire on the Miata. The problem is the tread wear. So any, any 15 above a 205 is 200 tread wear or lower. And I want to run Nittos, so any Nitto 15 that's above a 205 is sub 200 treadwear. It's the Intel ones, which is what we've run on it forever. So there's no, unless they gave me some exemption for, to the treadwear rule because my tires are so small. <laughs> <laughs> Wishful thinking. <laughs> right. Tiny little bicycle tires. Uh, we have to run a 205. Unless we run a 17, but I tried the car on a 17 and it, I didn't like it. It felt weird. It always felt good to have, that with the two, with the 15 it has a lot of sidewall and I, I just didn't like it without, with like smaller sidewall 17s and it looks like a clown car. I just can't do it. But yeah, so the plans for the Monte Carlo have shifted a bunch. If you want to criticize me for changing my mind, but you said, that's a joke now, like when you, we changed the mind, our mind on the trailer setup or whatever, and, and people are like, but you said three years ago that you would never get an enclosed trailer that wasn't a gooseneck. Are you lying then or are you lying now? <laughs> Times have changed. <laughs> Times have changed. That's all it is. You learn, you figure out little things as you go, and you change your approach by learning those things. So anyway, the Monte Carlo plan originally was a street-style drag car, like full interior, all that, drag car, auto, and try to do like the street, no prep events with it. However, I got the, the no prep bug again, and I really wanna build a full on no prep car. Whether I do it enough, whether I am ever able to figure it out and be good at it, I don't know. But I know I wanna, I wanna build the car because I'm going to enjoy it. So I, and I'm not the type, a lot of people ask why not the truck? Why don't you drag race the truck? Why not take the truck to no prep? Because it's heavy. The thing's like 4,500 pounds. Like, I'm just not the guy that can go out and go race knowing I'm not going to be even remotely competitive. I'm just not that guy. Like, if I'm going to go somewhere and compete, I, I want to be competitive or at least be on my way to being competitive. I'm a competitive person. I, I just am. It's just a fact of it. <laughs> I tried to deny it for a long time, but I'm competitive, man. And it's not so much that I like to win. I just don't like to lose. So it's like, I just, and, and I like being in the mix, you know? I'm just not the person that could go out and just know I'm going to get knocked out first round every time. Like, that, that wouldn't be that enjoyable. Point is, I want to build a real no-prep car. Since we're building a real no-prep car, there really is no point in making the Monte Carlo a full-on street drag car. So the idea is to make it kind of an in-between because when I was a kid, I wanted that car since I was probably eight years old and I had a build plan for it when I was like eight, I probably, probably when I was like 12 or 13 because I remember where we lived when I was looking this up. My idea was to make it like a NASCAR, like NASCAR engine, used NASCAR engine. I found somewhere that you could buy used NASCAR engines, the Chevrolet ones, which I can't even find them now, but... I found some website back then that sold used NASCAR engines that you could rev to like 9,000 RPM. And I was like, I'm gonna put that in there. And then I found that in Mexico, they were made with four speeds. So you could get a clutch pedal or something 
So then I was going to put a manual transmission in it and have, like, manual NASCAR, like, you know, NASCAR, like, big, meaty tires. Like, that was what I wanted to do with the car as a kid. That was kind of, like, my my dream build plan. Um, obviously, adult Taylor knows that that's not the most realistic thing. Like, trying to enjoy a street car that has a NASCAR engine and like a seven inch clutch, like oh, pro- wow. probably not the best. And it's still original. It's it got is, history. It's got family it's history still, and it's original. You can't undo that once you... <laughs> yeah, once you start hacking back. it, it's, it's over. So the idea is to build it without hacking it. Build it in a way where we could reverse it back to stock one day if we wanted to, um, and we're not having to tear up too much of the originality. I mean, that's why it's always planned was to be a street car with interior. So, uh, we'll, the plan the plan is we're going to meet in the middle of of current Taylor and Young Taylor's build plans. So, LS six two out of the Miata with some forged rods and pistons, direct port nitrous. We got the the carb style intake for it, of course. Got to make it look you know look at home and natural in there. We've got a Holly accessory drive, so we can have AC. Uh, but basically, a rowdy little 500 horsepower NA LS, 300 or so worth of nitrous, two-stage direct port, so we can really ramp it in. Uh, stick shift. Uh, I want to do like a Trimic TKX. It's like a five-speed, and it's face-plated second, third, fourth, but not first or fifth. So it's like still streetable transmission, but it's like a dog box and has the dog box bolt pattern, which is really neat. Uh, because it's four bolts versus like the T56 and it's smaller. That's what I like to do. Trimic, I think it's the TKX. There's a specific one that has uh, uh, the no prep scene is in a pivotal moment rules wise. Force 2000, Force Fed 2002. I saw the Street Racing Channel talking about something, but I didn't watch it yet. If you have any, any, uh, any information on that, let me know. Because I we need to figure yeah, out... we need to get up to date with the all this. <laughs> right. We need to know what, like, kind of like how we need to build the car before we start building it, you know? Like, obviously, we need to know, like, what kind of... Just how to build it. Like, are we going to cut the frame rails off, go tube chassis? Are we not, you know? What like, can we modify? What can we not? Exactly. Like that, I guess. We need to know that. And apparently, it's at a pivotal moment. Because I saw even... I saw multiple people talking about this, so... Any input would be greatly appreciated. I'll go. I'll watch their podcasting after this. They have a podcast on it. So, um, uh, but yeah. So that's the plan for the Monte Carlo. Uh, ideally, like be able to do some drag racing with it, like mess around some street stuff, gear banging, having fun, and then also be able to for it to handle okay. The question is whether we put like a drag pack on it or not. Every car looks cool with a drag pack. So it's like, do we want to put, you know, slicks and skinnies or radials and skinnies? Or do we want to put just like some meaty 18s? I don't ever like that retro look though. I don't, I'm not a fan of that one. The big wheels on older cars. Point is LS TKX. That's bare minimum plans. Plus going through some suspension. And we want to pull the body off and clean the frame and as well isn't that what you're supposed to do (laughs) i think so frame off restoration that's where that term comes from uh so yeah the plan is to revamp the miata new engine dog box new suspension i need to hit up just engineering that's the kits i the front and rear suspension i have on the vet and they have a rear grip kit for the miata and they have a really nice front angle kit and the miata suspension is clapped i mean the bushings are literally like falling out of it like it has been clapped for a long time so all fresh suspension, probably paint it. It's been long overdue for a paint job. Some fresh body panels, dog nice. box, high RPM combo, just to make it more exciting and try to kind of have that for like the LZ Invitational stuff or the stuff where people are going to complain about the vet. <laughs> well, we can still drive. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so that's the plan for the Miata. The Monte Carlo, I told you, uh, letting, go of the ch- letting go of my childhood during the NASCAR V8 to make it more practical. It's got to have AC and stuff. Otherwise, I'm never going to drive it unless it's nice out for two months out of a year, you know. Um, so, no prep car. I know this is what you're all here for. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so I don't know it yet. <laughs> right? I mean, it seems like a lot of people are here for it. Um, so, I'm torn on, on, on a couple of things with the no prep car. Pretty much all the way across the board. So, 
part of me wants to go the traditional route because I've never really had an excuse to have kind of like a traditional American car. Obviously, I have the Corvette and I've had a Corvette before, but like, you know, like an F body or a Fox body or things like that. I mean, those are, you know, Fox body, Chelsea's been drifting, but with drifting, you're so confined to this box of like what works good for a drift car, like what suspension design and what weight balance and this and that and you can't modify the subframes and you can't do this and it's got to have an angle kit that exists and all these things whereas the drag racing you're not so confined maybe but i don't know because i don't know what what the build rules are you know so like we need to figure that out maybe you are combined maybe you can't change the suspension around but as a whole you could build a drag car out of anything you know you could take the eight six and make it a drag car you know it doesn't matter as much as like a drift car so part of me wants to go with like a more american more traditional car because i can but then you got james with lieutenant dan his s13 coupe turbo ls 240 boys 240 which they're 240 boys we're all going this way i mean i started as a 240 boy people think i'm a miata boy because i started my channel with the miata but that was really just uh the best car available at the time that I could go drifting in. It was the only reason I bought it. I wasn't really ever a huge Miata guy. Rust is history. Literally, so they say. Uh, so, build a 240, S13. James says not to solid axle swap it, but I really want to solid axle swap it. Uh, but build the S13, no prep car, or try to get like, and have to do everything from scratch. We gotta build a cage ourselves, all that. Or try to get kind of a rolling chassis that's already sorted. I've got my eye on one. I've been talking to the guy. I need to actually reply to him. He messaged me yesterday. Um, get a rolling chassis so that way it's more so the fun side of things. We don't have to deal with like the cage stuff and all that. And like a lot of the hard parts are there. We've just got to like pick an engine combo, fabricate all that, build it how we, you know, bedazzle it. And so it says, get to do the fun part of the build. I'm leaning towards that way because what I've learned from like the Miata, and well, I mean, especially the Miata to the vet, right? They're totally different planets of cars. You know, they're not even on the same playing field. Um, but it's, it's everything I learned. I, I built the Miata without a ton of knowledge on how to build a good drift car. Just basic what I'd learned. And then the vet got all the knowledge from there, from running that car and operating it and figuring out this works, this doesn't work. You know, this stuff breaks a lot. We need to be able to take the axles out quickly. All this stuff. The vet got all that knowledge, and it's been really good. It's been standing out. Right. So I don't think I'm going to get it right the first time. You know, I don't think I'm going to build a no-prep car having never no-prep raced and get it right the first time. So we'll probably end up building another car anyway eventually. Well, we're going to try. If we get su we're going to try. <laughs> uh, but if we get super into it, you know, I feel like we'll probably want to – you know, build another one or maybe have one for each type. It just depends on how into it we get into yeah, it. That is the cool thing about drag racing. There's a bunch of... Uh, There's a bunch of types. I mean, yeah. the, the, I, when I say two types, I mean front side, no prep, back side. But then also you've got prep, you've got, you know, radial, you've got... Uh, drag and drive. Like, there's a bunch of different options. So bracket I, racing. Bracket racing. Bracket racing. So it kind of depends, too, uh, how we build it on how... If we want to do back side or front side no prep stuff like if we want to do the back of the track stuff where they race from the shutdown where it's like really bad surface stuff or if we want to do tree side which to me tree side it's like at that point why don't you just run on a prep track you know i don't know the thing that draws me to no prep is that you don't he who has the most money is not always going to win you can have three thousand horsepower out there and blow the tires off of the starting line which you can do on a prep track but it's it's more on a drag strip there's a certain amount of power that track's going to hold and a certain 60 foot time and it's really about that tuner's race of who can read the surface the best and driver reacting and car setup which that's what i like about no prep so i've got to decide which end we want to do i need to reach out to billy see if he'll answer some questions reach out to big chief he's i've talked to him before a very nice guy obviously super knowledgeable very analytical I need to reach out to some people that do this stuff and see what they think before we dive into a build. Because the worst thing would be if I like buy a chassis and start building it a certain way and then right. realize that we should have done it totally it's differently. Like we cut the firewall out. It's like, whoops. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Now all the events won't allow you to run no fire or, you know, have to cut firewall or whatever. Um, and then, you know, maybe we build it for backside and then end up loving front side. No, perhaps so. Uh, prep racing first. Nah, I'm good.
I want to do no prep. I've done, I mean, I've gone to eight, six or eight, five or something in Ruby, um, which was pretty cool. I mean, it was definitely really intense. Like I'm going to have to work my way up to it, but, uh, I think, you know, I'm kind of used to, I feel like I can adapt, you know, I feel like no prep's right up my alley. I know how to drift. I know how to do a rolling burnout to 140 miles an hour. I've done that in the vet. So like, yeah, I think cool. I've got the basics down. It'll be cool to try this new, new adventure. Right. A new, see what we can come up with. A new discipline and learn <laughs> like the, the funnest part. It's like, it's like when you're a kid. And all you want to do is grow up. You see the grown-ups, they get to do whatever they want. You just want to be a grown-up. <laughs> then you grow up and you're like, man, I really miss being a kid. Like, I wish I was a kid again. You know, like, I miss that just freedom. That's literally, like, how it is when you get into any sort of hobby, motorsport. You know, I see these people that get into drifting. And they just want to be A-class so bad. They want a tandem. And they just try to, like slingshot themselves as, as fast as they can to the most advanced class and then they get into comps and they get burnt out the fun of anything is learning you know when you go to the track and every time you show up you learn something there's nothing better than that i mean that's the whole reason i compete now is because i stopped getting that at fun events you know i show up to an osw event and i don't gain anything i don't necessarily drive better than the last time i might even drive worse than the last time i have as good a tandem so the, the progression is stagnant the only way to increase it is to go do it at a comp where it's do it right now so i i'm excited for the learning experience i'm excited to do something where we are going to be learning all the time i think it's going to be fun be a good time. <laughs> right? I hope. Ronaldo and Josue are really about it, too. Yes. They're really about the no prep life and just drag racing in general. Um, it's the roots. Isn't going to no prep the same as jumping to tandem when you don't know how to drift? Oh, I forgot this thing goes longer. I don't think so, personally. I mean, we got some. I, I, I think also if you have. Like, all right, when I first met Alex Bowman, he's a NASCAR driver, for those who don't know, and actually a really good one. Uh, he's become a friend, awesome guy. I met him through the Cletus races. And it's funny because we were sitting down all eating at Cletus's house. He had this big dinner for everyone uh, out in the shop. And Cooper's like sitting next to me, and then this guy's sitting next to him, and they're talking about this Corvette. And uh, Cooper's like, hey, you know, Taylor might know he had a drift Corvette. And he starts telling me about this guy's Corvette. He's like, oh, yeah, he's, he's just getting into drifting. He's got like a 600-horsepower vet with PVM front and rear and all. I'm like, why, if you were just starting drifting, would you build this crazy car? Who is this guy? And, like, why did he build this crazy car? So then I heard him say something about something that made me realize he was the NASCAR driver that everyone had been talking about. And I was like, okay, well, that makes sense. Like, if you're a professional race car driver, you're a NASCAR driver, and you want to get into drifting, you're not starting from zero. You're starting from 70. You know what I mean? So, like, you already know how to drive. You already know how to handle a car. Your progression ramp's going to be really quick. Um, and, I mean, it was. Like, he started tandeming with me and Ben and picked it up, like, instantly because he's a freaking race car driver. So, I think it's a little bit different switching from one motorsport to the other. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I just don't have any interest in prep drag racing. Like, I just don't have any. That just doesn't do anything for me. It's, it's a tough one. Like you said, it's a money game, essentially. Right. It's it like. Is. Unless you do bracket racing, maybe. Which then, I don't. Maybe it would bracket racing would be fun, but I just like. Then you're just going to keep progressively trying to go faster anyway. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Something about, like, you can only run to this time. And, and like you, you've got I mean, people that their cars are faster, but they slow the down. Like, is, I, guess. I guess, like hitting it right on, on the money. I guess that's true. It's a different kind of game. no prep equals tuners game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and car setup and car building and all of that stuff. Um, yeah. So that's oh the other thing on no prep, and it kind of also depends on what kind of no prep we want to do. Um, you just made Big Chief happy by what? Uh, he's a really nice guy. He reached out to me about some wiring stuff, letting me know. Anyway, he's, I started talking to him. Um, he's very, very cool, very like-minded. I love the way he approaches things. He's very analytical. And that's how I would be. Like, I'm not going to, like, build an OPREP car and, like, go show up to War in the Woods and to put it on 40 pounds of boost and hope I don't die. Like, <laughs> I'm not that guy. We're going to test and we're going to 
learn and we're going to work our way into it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that guy. Uh, but depending on what kind of note prep we want to do, whether we want to do tree side or back side, obviously I'd like to do both, but it's kind of like you got to build the car to suit one or the other. Um, it is the engine. So it seems like the mild displacement turbo LS stuff is the way to go. Because, like, if you look at the street racing channel, uh, the Falcon, Tommy's car, has, like, a 360, 6-liter, six 3-something, three 376, something like that. So, sub 400 cubic inch displacement. Billy just went to a sub 400 cubic inch displacement V8. It's making more power than ever because they're revving it. Cletus Garrett just went to a sub 400 cubic inch setup in Leroy. It's making more power than ever. So it seems like if you're turbo that's kind of the way to go is the smaller displacement whether it's an ls or a small block chevy um and that's going to be easier to tune for the backside stuff because i, I this is all don't have, i'm sorry theoretical theoretical <laughs> well, what i've learned from watching I, I haven't watched how to videos but i just i try to pick stuff up when i watch and i hear them say stuff and to put it in the memory bank and try to figure it out. And this is all just what I figured out from the outside looking in as an observer. Seems like back of the track stuff, it's sometimes if you have a big engine combo, it's hard to kill enough power. Um, someone said less lemon torque is better for no prep. Exactly. But then when you go on the front sides, you know, they're leaving on 10 pounds of boost. So it's like, it depends. That seems like the combo. The other thing is everyone's pro chargers seem to be the, the, big, the big ticket right now. Like crank driven pro chargers. Um, and it, it makes sense why it would be a good option, right? It's going to make the same boost at the same RPM every single time, whereas a turbo car is going to vary. You might need a little more dome pressure here or this or that. And then also, and then you just control the power with timing, right? So you pull timing out if you want to pull power out. But then also, cold side control is becoming a thing where you have a valve. Like a blow off valve, but like a butterfly valve, almost like a throttle body. Really, you could just use a throttle body in hindsight. Like, you wouldn't even need a specific valve. You could just use an electric throttle body. So uh, you have a valve on the cold side. So let's say the Pro Charger is going to make 10 pounds of boost at 4,000 RPM. These are generic numbers. Uh, you can just bleed some of that out if you want to pull even more power out of it. So I feel like the Pro Charge combo would be the easiest to tune, but. The Pro Charger takes power to make power. Turbo uses exhaust gas. It's wasted energy to spin the turbos to make the power. So you're not really losing any power aside from back pressure. The Pro Charger, the engine has to literally spin it and use the, some of that engine power to make the boost to make more power. So you need, as far as my guess and understanding, you would need a, a, a pretty powerful base engine to make good power with a Pro Charger. Sense, I think. Right. So then, but then that that so combo is going to be a little harder to kill power down low on like a backside. So I that's my those are my dilemmas. Two forty or something more traditional. Buy a rolling chassis versus build one from scratch. I'm leaning towards buying the rolling. Chassis. I got one that I'm maybe I'll try to put, you know make the deal happen after this uh, live stream or tomorrow uh, because we need a good project to start on. Um, and then small displacement LS turbo versus large displacement pro charger. Those are kind of my, 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 my things here. Uh, the other thing is we're in kind of a weird spot. I mean, and we've been trying to take advantage of it. Like we have projects, but we don't really have projects. You know, this is like the longest period I've gone without having starting on like a full build. You know, it's like you consider the bus a build, but it's like we've had these like straggler projects and I've been really trying to finish up all the stragglers, you know, like kind of get caught up on everything else to where all the other cars are like, they're done, they're good, they're ready. And before diving into some big project, and I have a bunch of these cars that are 90% finished and never get finished. Because that's where a lot of cars get stuck. You'll notice that. Like a lot of cars hit that 90%, especially YouTube wise, like YouTube cars, because Nobody really wants to watch you spend a lot of time on that last 10%. And understandably, like it's kind of boring, right? There's no big progress happening. So a lot of cars hit that 90% where like they run, they drive, but they got some problems, they're not great, and then they stick there. So I'm like, I'm really trying to fit it. Like the truck's at 95%, the 86 is at 90, 95%, you know? The F80s are kind of wherever, it doesn't really matter. They perfect as they are, they can get upgraded to be better. 
but they both work, so I guess not them. Um, but yeah, other than that, though, like, we don't really have any. So we've been trying to knock out the shop projects. And, you know, basically my order of operations is I want to start on this no prep car around the same time I want to start on the Monte Carlo. The Monte Carlo is just nailing down. Am I going to take the engine out of the Miata? Which I'm, if I'm going to take the engine out of the Miata, I need to be ready to replace it or be ready to commit to not being able to use it until we replace it. And if we're going to replace it, how deep are we going to go? Are we going to do a dog box? Keep the, you know, there's a lot of, there's still a lot of lingering. <laughs> Me and Oswald are going to have to talk about it <laughs> over a monster when he gets here to figure this out. We debate everything. We do. We do. We go back and forth in a good way. Like not our enemy, just like this, literally like this. Bounce ideas. Yep. It's great. I love it. I'm so excited when Oswald gets here. It doesn't matter how busy we are and how much work needs to get done. We need at least 30 minutes when he gets here <laughs> to just catch up talk plans get get the thoughts get the mind ready out of the brain it's you know it's one of those things um but yeah so basically Monte Carlo no prep car those around the same time the bus kind of at the same time but as far as a big build the Monte Carlo no prep car and then after that I'd like to start on the tube chassis build I really want to do that um, but to do that we need to do some shop projects we need to get a mill and a lathe which we now have our two where is he? Where is Shout he? out to R2. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Sick wave. Shout out to R2. Uh, yeah, no, we now have R2. So we have the capability to unload a mill and a lathe. Uh, so really the next thing is we need to make some room for a mill and a lathe, which to make room for the mill and the lathe, we got to build the loft. That's really what we're missing right now is the loft. So uh, in the lean two out the back. So my goal is to kind of get the shop, pro get the shop really it's never going to be 100%, but get it like as close to dialed as possible. So that way, when we start these projects, it's going to, I think it's going to kind of end up being one of those things where it's like we have, we're not working on any major build and then we go straight into like three major builds at the same time. You know you what I mean? Right. So I want the shop to be dialed, you know? I, I want us to have room to like organize all the parts for each and every project, not be tripping over boxes trying to do stuff like that sounds terrible so i think that's that's my rough game plan as of right now uh we just made a list to start on the lean two outback um we just went to the dragon with the f80 we put tees on it and some other upgrades it was great went to the dragon i know people don't normally like watching the dragon part of it so much which i get because like it it never looks as fast no, on video no. it's it's uh, you can attest you now you can't even explain <laughs> you have to try it it's it's worth it hey, on, on video it literally looks like we're cruising and in the car you're like duh, duh, like getting thrown all over the place like just like at the limit of grip you know it, it's like, duh, 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 like on good. video yeah yeah they're fast it feels Cars wild yeah i love them i love that car so much when you get on throttle coming out of the turn and it's like narrow and you're going to the next turn like he said it last time when we were there he's like it feels like warp speed it does like literally when you roll into it in third it's like what? it just keeps pulling it's, it's sick. Nice. so nice. yeah we did that um we're gonna start hopefully maybe tomorrow on the the lean to i've been i've been dragging my feet because i wanted to build it out of steel to match the shop but trying to get this exact kind of steel is like it's kind of like a specialty thing to get it by itself and it's just a more involved project to do we're going to do it out of wood we're just finally going to just build it out of wood because this is something that's very easy to do that's i, I call it like talking yourself down the rabbit hole where you're like okay well i want to do this thing and then you're like if i'm going to do this thing uh then i want to do it this way and if i'm going to do it that way then i might as well do this too and then if i'm going to do that too i might as well do this Ooh, but that's all a lot so then you just don't do any of it. And it's like, it's better to do step three than not do it because you can't do step six of how you want to do it. So we're going to build it out of wood, which is fine. And we're just going to paint it and seal it. And uh, building a, a lean-to, should we use, we should use treated wood, right? I would assume because it's going to be outside. Does it have to be treated or can we use non-treated and seal it? Or do we use treated and it doesn't matter if we seal it? Comment below. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, question. Uh, but we're gonna try to we're gonna try to get uh, we're gonna try to do it tomorrow. So lean to loft. In between there, I've got to work on the black F eighty, get it ready for drift week, and we've got drift week coming up next month. 
November, I think 11th is when it starts. I forget which tracks are public. I'll have to look. I'll share that treated. Use treated where it's on the ground. Post should be treated. Lid does not need to be treated. Is it better if it's treated? Like, I can just get all treated. That's fine. I just treat it as better, but cedar is best. The cedar was expensive. When we got the wood for this table, I think this is cedar, white cedar. And those were maybe, I don't know. We painted them anyway, and you can't even tell. There are different types of treated, but use treated. Okay. All right, cool. Answer to my question. Uh, what was I saying? Do you remember? It's the law. The law. Treated wood on the lean. Uh, the loft, we gotta build the loft. Oh, the black F80, we need to get it ready. Oh, I got me. like some stuff for it, some upgrades. Different wheels coming hopefully soon so we can like have some some rip wheels. Uh, we might do some grip grip racing on Drift Week, which I'm really excited about. So we'll have NTO ones all the way around for the daily wheels with tire pressure sensors. So those work on that car, which will be really nice. It's nice to use the features and it's like really rewarding on that car to try to get everything to work like factory even though it's a straight up drift car definitely rewarding <laughs> right with, with wise fab and handbrake and all the things like when i did drift week a lot of that stuff didn't work the hill assist braking didn't work like the cruise control didn't work the speedo didn't work the auto like so much stuff didn't work because of a few issues like with sensors and things and like fixing all of those fixing the electronic diff we had like the manually locked diff thing that jordan made us um going back to the electric diff with those fixed to where it's like a proper limited slip again and that all working well it's very satisfying so i want to get the tire pressure sensors working so that way i have tire pressure when we're daily in it and then we just put the drift spares on when we're going to drift it we've got some other stuff to do so we need to get that car ready for drift week because uh, Drift Week is soon. Uh, so basically shop projects, Drift Week prep, uh, that car, Drift Week. And then hopefully we'll go pick up a new chassis for no prep, a no prep build before Drift Week. And then be able to get start getting parts coming for that and get started on that. That's the hard thing about YouTube, man. It's a full-time job just planning builds and getting parts and, you know, hitting up companies. Like you've got to try to work with companies as, as much as possible because if, if you didn't, you would ha you would just lose money all the time until you had no money, <laughs> you know? It just wouldn't be, not even, you wouldn't even break even, you know, a lot of times, unless you're a really large channel. So, you know, that's a whole aspect of it. And I'm big on, I'm not going to take, like, I'd rather pay for the right parts than get the wrong parts for free, you know? Like, I'd rather pay for quality stuff that's gonna work and hold up than get, something else for a discount or free um but if i can get the quality parts that i want for a discount that helps a lot you know it goes a long way when it comes to just making content like content is effectively it's you know what you put into what you get out so if you put three thousand dollars worth of parts on a car in a video you know that's it's there's a lot there's a yeah. lot to it you know and there's that's a lot of, there's a lot of factors and, and trying to plan all of that stuff is, is tough. Um, someone, thank you, Hunter Cole, for replying to the person asking about the bus. It's always tough when people pop in current and I keep answering the same question. Ooh, there's one for you. What is going on with Hostway's drift car? Oh, it's parked back in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for some time. I'm gonna buy you a 90 millimeter throttle um, body. No, it's just that it's just time and yeah. just forgetting. It's like, oh yeah, that and then it's like school. Yeah, I mean we're just busy. There's always a lot. It's, I mean, it's, it's, I haven't forgotten. I, I, I mean, I come home and I look out every day. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> uh, Brandon said he's got the steel connect. Wait, who was that? Geeked I did see somebody say they they emailed you. Oh, okay. But All right. You gotta dig through there. And... Yeah, I gotta <laughs> check my emails. I'm slacking. But yeah, ideally we'll come back from Drift Week and be ready to start on the no prep car. We'll have the car, I've got to figure out what I want to do engine wise. Um, you know, do I want to build, I'm, I'm probably going to buy a built engine from somebody. Um, need to get ECU to decide if we want turbo or pro charger, get turbos, get a pro charger. Maybe I can convince Garrett to work with me after running their turbo on the vet. Um, yeah, and we gotta decide how we wanna do it. If we wanna do cold side control on, if we do a turbo setup, there's so many, there's so many yeah. factors. There's a lot of things. So many ways you can go about it. Stop. Oh, um, also on shop projects. So the lean two is what we're hopefully gonna start on. 
gravel. We need to re-gravel the pull around driveway. We've got some other house stuff I want to do. I want to put like some street lights and like the dock lights again, but re-gravel that. And we need to like level this out. This way is where the trailers are. Level this out. And uh, so we have like a more level place to park the trailer and the bus. So that way the bus isn't in the front yard. You know, it's kind of a little bit of an eyesore right now, but it reminds me it exists and I can't out of sight, out of mind. It. <laughs> um, so yeah, is that way we can put it over there? And then ideally build an RV carport for over there. So then we have like covered parking there. We need to out back, loft in here, air conditioning, like have all the space. The ultimate setup. Right? Yeah. The ultimate setup for what I'm allowed to do here. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Work with can. Right. For what we hate, for our base, ultimate. I mean, I'm, I'm in love with it. The, I'm so happy with how this, uh, this stacker lift turned out. This thing was a game changer. It's just so much more room in the shop. Everything's so much more organized than it was before. I mean, we don't, we, all the cars are inside. None are in a trailer or the bus. And we have a whole bay open. That's wild. That has never happened before. So that's cool. And then we're gonna have car storage out back here soon when we build this lean-to. So we're cruising right along, as I like to say. That's it for my notes. I'm sure I'll think of something right after this that I uh, that I wanted to, to talk about. But I was just like I said, I'd really like to. Maybe we'll maybe I'll get on making that podcast, and then we'll just do like a weekly or bi-weekly or wait no every two weeks episode. Um, have you ever considered doing a front wheel drive build? We have some some good questions that some pre-show questions, um, but. Yeah, so maybe maybe I'll do an, uh, uh, let me know, comment below if you'd like to see a Jibber Jabber podcast. It may just be me by myself talking sometimes, maybe me, Raldo, and Josue, maybe me and Josue, maybe me and Ben, maybe me and Gletus or Cooper or some other guest, Adam, you know, uh, but it's just, I'd like to do it all in person if I can, and it's hard. It's that rabbit hole thing. I've talked myself down the rabbit hole. If I'm going to do a podcast, I want to do in-person interviews only. you got to do it right. Right, and if I'm going to do it right and do in-person interviews only, then it's really hard to get people to come because nobody has time. All the people that you know, would be good to talk to on a podcast are all the people who have very limited time. So it's just then you talk yourself down the rabbit hole of not doing it. So We'll have to start, though. Yeah. Who thinks we should start? He should start. So far, we need Sandy. <laughs> should I have ever brought out? Are you thinking of selling the bus? Oh, podcast out of the bus? Yes. Oh, yeah. So that's the other thing with the bus is like long term, once it's dialed, I would like to take like a solid three month, four month, who knows how many month road trip in it, <laughs> especially with the trailer too, because I could bring two cars and like all the things and, and a golf cart possibilities. <laughs> uh, and just travel the country and like just casually make my way around the country, hitting a bunch of different drift events and set up to have it to where we can like set up a podcast studio in it so I can interview different guests in different areas That'd be super neat. do like a rolling. So there's, that's the cool thing about the bus is there's so much potential of use case oh see chelsea i could definitely get chelsea on the podcast for sure chelsea's the homie um it would be a good one maybe that'd be our first podcast chelsea <laughs> ask him why he quit <laughs> ask him why he retired retired, retired. retired. he hasn't even told me i was just talking to him a couple <laughs> days ago i was talking to him about shop stuff and then i saw the announcement that he was retiring and i was like this dude didn't even mention that he was going to retire in two days when we were talking about shop stuff Gotta find out with everybody. <laughs> Apparently, um, uh, but yeah, we could do podcasts in the bus, travel to drift events. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot we can do with the bus. So I plan to keep the bus for a long term, and uh, we have the truck and trailer too. So I do really want to go through the mega cab now again. Do injectors, built transmission. I kind of want to put semi wheels on it, um, which then then kind of have to re gear it, but. <laughs> Dial in the mega cab. I really like the mega cab. Jibber jabber cross country drive and podcast out of the bus where you drift at all the bros home tracks. Yeah, exactly. So someone said clickbait. How is it clickbait? I said, why do I sell? This is. If you ever decide to start a YouTube channel, <laughs> just know it can be frustrating. You'll like explain everything you think you need to explain to like explain the point. 
and then like someone will pop in and watch like 10 seconds of it and then just hit you with a comment without actually watching like the trailer video he said he's just joking oh <laughs> We're all just I'm joking. sorry. I'm sorry. We're all just I'm joking. sorry. I'm sorry. I took it too I seriously. I took it too seriously. <laughs> the trailer video, man, it was just like people were going in on like, uh, this guy's had more tow rigs than drift cars. or, And I'm like, I just like tow rigs. I like trailers, man. What can I say? Like, he I had, does. He does. It's <laughs> true. It's true. I had FL2K. I was that. just looking at all the trailers, it's you know? Tow rigs. And it's like part of the reason for the bus and part of why I traded my trailer, you know, to make the deal for the bus was like, I just was kind of bored of it, to be honest with you. Like I'd had that trailer for over two years. Me and Josue did the cabinet, or I don't even know if you were here regularly when the cabinets. It's still at the beginning, but yeah, no. Uh, so we did the cabinets in it. We did winch. We, we did a bunch of stuff and we towed that trailer all over the country. And it was like kind of time to try something new. You know, and the bus was something new, and we knew we'd get another trailer. That's the annoying thing is I was going to put a clip from the video when we got the bus. I remember explicitly saying, we're going to buy another enclosed trailer. I did say probably a 24-foot aluminum enclosed. We ended up with a 28, but uh, pretty much the same thing. But people are like, ah, oh, see, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I knew the bus wasn't going to work out. I'm like, hey, dude, I try I'm a human too, right? Like right after I got the bus, you know, like I, I had some buyer's remorse. And I was like, this is really the right call. Like everybody does. If you make a big purchase and you buy, especially something that's physically big too, like it's cost money and it's, it's large and it's, you got to store it, you know, you're like, oh man, this is, uh, this is a lot. Um, but people just forget we're humans too. Trailer, trailer Ray. Hard full of trailers. I think that dude's hating. I'm not even gonna read your full comment because you're hating. Someone said podcasts. Oh, there we go. Austin Beck. Loft. Yeah, I haven't been able to see the super chats. No, no, not on mine. Like I, like I kind of tried. To he see said them. loft build for a podcast. See, that would be really cool. We did, we did yeah. discuss sitting up top with a Miata for this live stream yeah. to where we'd be overlooking the shop. Yeah, maybe but next one. Stay tuned. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, so we've got some pre-show questions. So this was SK3 Skelly. Let's call it Skelly with Skelly. a three. Um, someone said, they said, you, here, you read it. You want to read it? I, you want me to read it? I can read it. Uh, Hosway's not I'll a big it. talker. I'll read it out to you guys. It's not my the fault. question is from Skelly. Skelly. All right. You have almost everything you could want in life, I'd imagine. What is the main pushing thing that keeps you motivated in life like what is that idea or thing that gives you the extra push when you're out of everything mentally and physically okay that's so he's got three questions in one so we'll start with that one um man i should have thought about the answer to the question <laughs> before oh uh, what is the main thing that keeps you motivated so i am at a point where i feel like i don't think if I were to be able to make more money or buy more stuff, like it would do anything for me, you know? I was at a point, most of my life, I it was trying to have just a functioning drift car. I didn't a dream was to have a truck and a trailer one day and like an LS drift car, you know? And then to have an LS drift car and then now the, the Corvette and like the truck and the trailer. Um, I definitely, I don't think having any more stuff is gonna make you any more happy at a certain point. I, I think, we're at that point. So I think the key is to just, one, I want to do more cool stuff with my friends. I want to see Raul Dono Sway be able to get cooler stuff and do stuff like go to the Dragon. We've been talking about that a lot since we got back from the Dragon. Josue getting a newer sporty car so he can come and I would say that. And then just uh, learning. It really goes back to that, like learning things, the progression. Like that's why I want to build an OPREP car because I want to learn. I want to learn the, the tuning side of it and the power management side and the driving side of no prep and the car setup side of no prep. I want to learn how to, I want to do the tube chassis project because I want to learn how to use a mill and a lathe and I want to learn how to make my own parts and get better in CAD. And I think learning is, would be the answer. Learning, progression. How do you stay motivated to rotary swap a bus? <laughs> All right. Uh, the next one? Yeah, read, read the next one. Uh, what's the thing you're most proud of so far you've done in life? <sighs> I mean, this, these are deep, dude. I know. That you. could get really deep, <laughs> but I would say it's corny as it is. 
I mean, it would be between winning clutch kickers because I, I felt like I really earned that round, you know. Like, I didn't have – like, it wasn't a bunch of luck battles. Like, we had good battles. Raldo and Jose were there. Like, we all did it together. Like, I remember giving them the bottle of champagne. Like, you got to try the hot <laughs> champagne. Do with it. Because uh, it's <laughs> disgusting. But when you just won, it's great. And uh, that was it. That was one. And then building the vet, I would say. You know, it was a really fun project. Me and Jose got to do it together. We both learned a lot building it. So much. Um, and, like, taking it out for the first time and having no issues – because I know how unheard of that is. I mean, it's just that's just the nature of building a new car. You're always going to have issues. And the fact that we covered our bases enough to where all we had to do on the first test was drain the catch can because we had never drained it and uh, burp the cooling system. That was it. That was the only two problems we problems we had. So I'd say probably probably that. Um, there's another one from one the more, same one guy. More. One piece of advice to give to a young guy with no idea what to do with his life. <sighs> See, this is like one I should have thought out too. Uh, I would say try things because you, you never know what you're going to enjoy. Right. And don't give up. Don't give up. Try things. Try out different things. You know, don't, don't settle. Don't settle for some career or some path that you think is the, the best you're going to get or just it's easy because you know it works like try things experience things you never know what you might like you know there's definitely things in life that i thought i would have no interest in and then i, I mean drag racing five years ago i had zero interest in drag racing and none whatsoever and then i started looking at no prep and now i think drag racing is so cool you know so you never know what you're going to like and what's going to scratch that itch um and I would say learning again, like trying to learn new skills and stuff, it's very rewarding and being able to build stuff with your hands is is very satisfying and you get that reward, you know, instead of, you know, for me, like I don't go out and party, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do any of that. And I don't, I, I some people call me a homebody and I travel, I like to go to events, you know, we go racing and I mean, when we do, we watch forensic files in the hotel and <laughs> eat Waffle House, uh, but uh, my biggest thing is like, you know, I used to go hang out with everybody and I, I like talking, I like being social and when, when I'm at events and in those times, but you know, I, I would come home at the end of the night and not feel like anything changed. I didn't feel like I accomplished anything. I, it just felt like another day had passed by and it was fun hanging out, drinking with the friends, but I quit drinking. I kind of, you know, just dug into my work and Every day when we're done, I mean, some days I feel like we didn't get anything done. And I feel if, if we get something done, you know, and we have this good project and we finish, like, I feel good. And it's like, that's my reward. And like, I'm happy and I'm content. And I can go inside and eat dinner and relax and, and be content about it. So I don't know, long-winded way of saying, I think, you know, learning a, a skill and, and building stuff with your hands or even building stuff on a computer, you know, learning CAD or whatever, or going in coding, learn something and be able to do something. And no matter what happens, nobody can take that away from you. When are you going to do Cooper's podcast soon? I promise. I want to do that. We've talked about it. I'm just a slacker, but I'll, I'll hit him up. Um, I'll read this one. So this is Nicholas. How did you say that? Fairies? Fairs? Fairs? Maybe. P-H-A-R-E-S 3970. Uh, how do you manage to keep your garage shop clean? I have a hard time balancing using all my time allowed to make progress on a project, uh, trying to stop early to clean, knowing I'll need them again tomorrow. Uh, I just thought this was a really good question because, you know, there are a lot of people that like hustle and kind of toss tools everywhere and just leave the shop a mess because it's it's fast, like they're just trying to get the work done. And I, I understand that. And when we're on a real time crunch, like when it's coming up on, we're about to leave for an event the next day and I'm like trying to get done early so I can like go shower and relax and, and eat and all that, like it, it'll get a bit hectic. But I, from what I've experienced myself, I can be a bit OCD, like I think legitimately. Um, <laughs> I feel like we all have our OCD moments. Right, I think we all have a little bit of it. Uh, it's, uh, it's more efficient to put all the tools back and then grab the tools as you go, as opposed to like trying to dig through a pile of tools. Cause I've done it both ways. And sometimes I'll still do it where like, I'll leave the tools on a 
on a rolly car and it's like it's honestly such a pain because i'm like do i have the 18 out here do i not have the 18 <laughs> like, what is it? you know is it here so then i'm just like digging through tools i feel like i it's more efficient for me to just put them back and then just go back and get them i think it's more efficient but also personally as someone who clutter bothers me i work a lot better in a clean shop like us doing the the three car stacker and like putting it all together to where we're able to like reorganize everything and we don't have the clutter we had before, like feels like a weight lifted off my shoulders. Like I'm like, I just want to be in here. I just want to do stuff because it's so clean and organized. So, you know, there's like that, that saying about a queen room is a queen mind or something like that. You know, if you, if you clean your room, that's like the step one, you know, because that clutter, like it does affect you. I mean, maybe it doesn't affect some people, but it affects me. I can't stand clutter and it bugs me and I feel like I just don't like clutter. So for me, it's way better to just clean it, you know? And, and at the end of the day, we spend what, 10 minutes, maybe, you just know, time. even if it's like a disaster, it literally only takes just us like 10 minutes. Tidy up. Right. Put the tools back, back where they go, tidy up, clean up. You like just stop and like walk out the door. <laughs> right. Because then you come back in and then it's just like, where do I even start? You know, because it's just such a mess. So that's, to me, I think it's worth it. Uh, Austin Steel. Well, yeah, you can read it. You can read it. All right. If you had the oppor opportunity to drive any type of professional race car, such, such as Pro Am, Formula One, Pro Mod, Pro Mod, that's a Pro Mod, oh, I can't read, <laughs> etc. Which branch would you choose, and would you want a specific car from said motorsports? Um, that's definitely F one. Uh, I don't think I could drive an F one car like more than a lap, if that, uh, or get twenty percent of the limits out of it. But definitely an F one car would be the craziest i just want to like i'd love to experience what it's like to drive an f1 car just because it would be so much more relatable watching it because i think i have it like i try to grasp what they go through in my head and there's a lot of people that don't you know they're like oh those aren't athletes they're drivers anyone can drive and it's like what they endure is insane the g-force constantly lap after lap for hours you're experiencing five g's in corners and under braking like they have to train their necks. You see them all, like, got these stout necks because, like, <laughs> the helmet's trying to rip their head off around a corner. Like, it's crazy. Uh, so that would be cool. Um, also, we have a little notes on here for LZ World Tour FD Pro. We already kind of talked about FD Pro. Um, LZ World Tour, we kind of talked about. I'd like to rebuild the Miata and do the LZ stuff. I think Adam's doing a great job with that series, and I, I think it's really kind of the right thing. You know, I, I'm... I don't have the best car for it. Like the vet is not the best car for it, but I think it's great. I think the rules and regulations are great. I think it's the, the limiting it to a 265, like two, three, I think it's maybe 300 treadwear. I don't know. I know it's changed a little bit, but like a 300 treadwear 265, you can keep up with just about any, it really evens the playing field. It's like hard tire racing. If you're into drag racing, it's like hard tire racing. You can be the guy with 2,000 horsepower. You put a hard tire on, like you're not going to use 2,000 horsepower on a hard tire. It's literally hard tire drifting, uh, which I think is great. So it's very competitive, like, and again, draws a bunch of good drivers uh, from all over. So I think I'm going to try to focus on at least doing more than just the Orlando round of that next year. Um, I know that... Uh, in the auto in Canada, they have the the Jay-Z Subaru. And in hindsight, I could have drove that. I didn't know that was an option. And I just thought about it. I was talking to him. Uh, so maybe try to, I'd like to try to do more of the LZ stuff next year. Um, I really like Adam and he's doing a good job with all that stuff. And he's fun to drive with. And those guys are all fun to drive with. So yeah, and Drift Week. Definitely Drift Week next year. And this year, we're gonna be doing Drift Week. Um, yeah. Uh, before we go, we do have some new merch. We're finally, we, we, me, Raldo, and Josue all, all worked really hard on the merch, which Raldo and Josue manage the merch. Like, they have the stuff at their shop, they ship it out. So, by buying merch, you're not just supporting the channel, but you're supporting Raldo and Josue. Uh, so, I'm going to show you guys some new merch real quick because Raldo yells at me. So, we got new magnetic koozies. These ones are like super nice. We got four magnets. Boom. Hopefully this stuff will be listed soon. I'm just not, I'm not the type to build up a lot of suspense in a big drop. We got a hoodie. 
It's gonna be posted soon. Soon, maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Well, we got it in stock though. Sneak peek. Boom, garage built hoodie. Pretty stoked on this one, like Crash Bandicoot kind of look, uh, 90s vibes. Uh, we've got this work shirt. Boom, this is a front. It's got the, the tang and everything, and then this is new the, logo. The back, we got a bunch of new designs. Pretty freaking pumped. Finally putting some time into the merch. Um, and then this shirt, got the logo up front, and then the vet on the back, finally, vet shirt. So pretty stoked on the new merch. Hopefully that will be up soon. We are planning to do the Fummins giveaway, um, but I don't know if that'll be in two weeks or two months, you know, or six months. So uh, if you want this merch, it is in stock. It hopefully posted in the next day or so. Um, and it might run out. When we do the giveaway, like we'll probably, you know, whatever's in stock can go, but then uh, probably a lot of it will be pre-order because we just really don't know what the demand's gonna be. You know, I did it the, my giveaway on my bed a long time ago, um, but it was totally, it's the same thing. It was a totally different like landscape back then. Like there was less people doing giveaways, but my channel was different. So I don't know. I have no idea what to expect. You know, I don't know if we're gonna get a hundred people that enter or a thousand or what, I have no clue. Um, but we are gonna do the Fummins giveaway. Like we, the wheels are in motion. Right, yes. But we've got our, our first batch of new merch, which I just showed you. Uh, we do have a lot more coming too that are gonna drop when we drop the giveaway. So if you want that stuff, definitely check it out. Try to get it while you can. We got limited supplies in stock. I did a merch vlog. Are you proud of me? Well, I'm tomorrow. Check it out tomorrow. Yeah, check, check it out. Now it's not there. It's not there. Okay. Don't uh, panic. Don't panic. Just check, check with the next couple days. See, I put put Enraldo <laughs> under the gun to get it done. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's all I wanted to talk about. We've been on here a long time. Uh, someone keeps asking what no prep chassis. I said I don't know. That's the whole thing. I don't know. We're still debating We're still... with you. <laughs> Thank you. This way gets it. To maybe it's build a 240 maybe buy like an f body that's already built maybe a uh probably can't do a fox body i would love a fox body not stock fox but there's so many people like you go to a no prep and for a fox body we get 240 literally we every, what fox body what for, for fox body we get a 240 yeah we, we might as well that. do the 240 <laughs> if we're gonna do a fox body because it's like the same thing but different at least so I don't know, uh, it depends on what we can find. Again, I found a deal on one that, I, you know, the guys are really cool, I've been talking back and forth with them. Uh, so I just need to hit him up and see if we can make it happen. Talk to Jack Stan about buying one of his 240s. He's not gonna sell, he's not gonna sell one of his 240s. But hard to come by. Here, you should comment real quick before we end this and then I can make you a moderator for the future. So guys, get your... Get your final questions in. Is a girl peeking out of the Chevy truck? This one made you look. Made you look. <laughs> I see. Oh, God. I hate when people spam comment. Oh, there you are. There you go. Oh, oh, come on, come on. Yes. Ha. All right. Look next time. Add as moderator. <laughs> Boom. Managing moderator. Sweet. What's the difference between a regular moderator and a managing moderator? I don't know. Uh, my, my, nothing changed on my end. So. <laughs> we'll see if you can can manage blocked words, change chat modes live. Also has the capability of standard. Now, now we're just doing uh, settings. All right, kidding. you're you're a manager, <laughs> moder manager, moderator. All right, Josue, do you have anything you want to add before we I mean, zip this off? It feels like we've only been here for like thirty minutes, but it's been it's been a minute. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been almost. It's been a while. I hate when people say that at the end of live streams. I like watching people talk too. Like I know I like to talk, but I'll watch someone's live stream after the fact and watch the whole thing. Like that's the whole point. I mean, give or take, you can't catch it live. Right. You just get to learn things. It's it exciting. Tomorrow at work. Someone said what? Oh, well, here we go. Is fast orange the best or what? No, it's not. The tub of towels is the best. <laughs> uh sell the bus and buy another similar bus that doesn't make any sense um something also a lot of people said well why wouldn't you buy a toter like cletus a toter mm -hmm. setup <laughs> do you know how much a toter and a race trailer costs <laughs> this is way more expensive than the bus i mean like his toter setup for example is probably significantly more than my house costs 
So that's that's like a whole nother ball game. The bus is like here, like a real baller toter setup is here. You can get cheap toter setups, but they're still way more than the bus cost. And then you're gonna have the same problems as the bus because they're gonna be the same age as the bus. Nowhere near as cool. And not as cool. I did see an all-in-one setup today for I'm sale. Sure somebody will find it's a one. Kenworth, <laughs> and it's oh, I saw it today, and it looks pretty cool. But you know, it's too late. All right, I'm gonna get off here. Uh, half a mil. That's what, what I'm saying. Holding? Like half a million dollars. That's more than my house. Have you considered a D-stroke LS for the Miata? Yeah, that's kind of the plan. Is some some sort of high RPM combo. All right, you guys are leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Uh, comment below. Appreciate it. Also, also, okay, last thing. I was I was almost about to cancel. Thank you all. I know this is cheesy and everyone says it all the time, but thank you all for the support, for watching the videos, for buying the merch, for commenting, for just saying cool things, you know, for inspiring stories. Like I hear people's inspiring stories all the time of how, you know, the videos helped them. I met a guy um, from, you know, who's in the military at an OSW event. Uh, his story was heartwarming. Like, just thank you all for everything you do, for watching the videos, for letting me know, you know, everything. For I mean, tons of people have helped me find problems, solutions to problems. Like, I can't say enough thanks to all of you for everything that you do. It's a great community. Thank you. Thank you. So, goodbye. Appreciate Bye. you.